Hello guys, Stacy here. I am <laughs> have to let you know right off the bat, I'm getting over being sick. I was out of work for an entire week because I haven't felt well, but I'm finally feeling better. So here I am recording Star Stable with you guys <laughs> and happy to be here. It is, uh, well, okay, it is Gary's back. So it's Jorvik Wild Horse Week. And the good thing about this is that now the Yorvik Wild Horses are as fast as the other horses. Yay! So I thought I would show you guys my wild horses that I already have, because I have all of them so far. There's none that I have to pick up from Gary while he's here. Um, but I just wanted to warn you ahead of time that they're all probably level one, because I don't really use them that often. So yeah, we're going to go through them, but please don't be offended at their low, low, low levels. <laughs> So I have Berry Boy, that's a fun name, some of these names I don't know, Everglory, I liked that one because it was gold, Jade Joy, I like that name, it's very fitting I think for the green horse, Do Dollar, <laughs> I don't know, I love this name, I don't know why I picked Do Dollar for this particular horse, but I do love that name. Uh, then over here we have Vanilla Candy, eh, it's an okay name, beautiful horse though. And oh my, is visiting Pop Star, our speckled birthday cake horse. And then, of course, what do we have here? Chance Charm, the frozen North Swedish horse. He, I, I don't know how I feel about this name. I like this name a lot, but I don't know how I feel about it for this horse. Maybe you guys can suggest something, something else for him. He's so pretty. I love him. He's super cool. I love his hair. But Chance Charm, I don't know that that really fits. Have we changed that horse's name before? <laughs> okay, then over here is Obsidian Born. This is Galloper Thompson's horse. Obsidian Born, that's a pretty, pretty sweet name. Um, then we have the two magical horses from Midsummer. This is Cherry Biscuit. <laughs> I love that name. Uh, Shark Heart, which might be one of the best names I've ever picked for a horse. And then we have the Icelandic ones, Ice Knight. These were the first Jorvik Wilds ever released. Melody Bell and Storm King. I love their names. Melody Bell is adorable. These were the first three Jorvik Wild horses and one of them was designed by a player. I don't know if you guys remember, we did an Instagram kind of competition. I think I'm under attack. Are we under attack right now? We did a competition on Instagram where people could design their own Eurovic Wild Horses and this was like their big announcement that they're coming and pick one. You could pick the color and the decoration and stuff. It was so fun. There are so many cool horses and I believe it was this one that was chosen from those. So one of our players, oh I forget who now, I'm so sorry, designed this horse and it made it into the game. Yay, super fun. Mine, mine were all blue, I think. Wait, I must have them on my Instagram still. Oh, there's Melody Bell. Oh yeah, I designed two of them and then I like linked them. I put them together in one. They're so cute. Yeah, so you could pick their main color, their body color. It was a good time, it was a good time. But those were the result. But now they're back. I think this is the first time those ones are returning. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Anyway, but now that they're, you know, normal, quote unquote, normal speed, you know, I can use them more often and they don't have to be level one anymore. Yay. So I thought I would take one out today and then I just, I could not decide. I kind of want to do a Shire, but then I'm worried if I do... If I do a quest that requires a higher level horse, I don't know. So I thought we'd bring one, but then also uh, the druid training has returned. Um, so we could go and train one of these horses. But like, which one should I pick? I'm tempted to take the rainbow one, cause it's rainbow. But I like this speckle one too, pop star. Oh, vanilla candy. Oh, this horse looks huge. I 1000% forgot that the horse is going to look very different when we're not inside our stable. So uh, I did not plan for this color scheme. We're just gonna go with it. I like this color though. I like its normal color. Look at its hair. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. 
But look, our magic colors show up here at the Druid Circle. Hello, sir. You have completed the first step of your training, but a druid and their loyal steed both must be in constant training to further forge their sacred bond. If you so wish, I can let you repeat these exercises every day to improve as a rider and a druid. What do you say? I say yes, sir. Let's give it a go. Good. Return to me each day and I will provide you with the tasks to continue your training. Until then, I'll be here pondering the inner mysteries of the universe. Okay. Ooh, catch the green globes. Catch 10 globes before time is up. We'll see how we do. Oh, yay. Oh, we missed that one. So uh, let's go here. Caught it, caught it. Let's go here, caught it. All right, just hang out, just hang out. Plan for the next one. All right, we got it, we got it. Let's go here. We'll catch it, we'll catch it, go, go, go! Nay, we missed it! Run, oh, run to this one. We only need one more. Did I do it? <laughs> okay, that one was right on the edge. But we did it! Good job, Vanilla Candy. Catch is complete. Next is Crossfire, oh no. Fire is a very dangerous thing. Fire can appear in different forms, so it's better to be safe than sorry. Stay in the training area until the time is up. In this exercise, the fire will always come at you from different angles. You and your horse will need to jump to get away from the fire. It is important to maintain a moderate speed and to have a good overview of the area to figure out the best moment to jump safely without leaving the circle or into another line of fire. Okay, oh goodness. Oh, I remember this one. The fire walls are going to come across the circle from somewhere at some time. I think there's actually a sound that goes with it, but I don't have my headset on today. <gasps> it's purple! Oh my god. Okay, no, no worries. <gasps> oh no, oh no. It's okay, it's okay. We got this. It's the worst when they come like two in a row from the same direction. Figure out where the next one comes from. <gasps> there it is. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Yes. It's super cool looking. It's like creepy Pandoric fire. <gasps> there it is again. It's okay. We got it. <gasps> oh no. I don't know why I panic every time. <laughs> I just realized underneath this horse's hooves are rainbow as well. <gasps> See, like that. I don't like when they come from the same direction. All right. I like to give it some room because we need some room to jump. So, oh no. See? Why? So let's come back here and we'll turn around. Slow. Jump slow. <gasps> no. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Okay. Okay, okay, we got this. <laughs> I love how this new fire looks, it's beautiful. We're almost done, don't mess it up now. Yes, that's the end, we did it. Oh, butterflies, I love the butterfly one. Oh, I didn't even read it, I'm just so excited. <laughs> I love catching the butterflies. Yay! It's just relaxing, you just run around and run into the butterflies. Hooray! Oops. Hooray! <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Vanilla Candy. You don't know this yet, but it's kind of a risk to ride with me. Okay, we have one more. Who is it gonna be? None of those. Pink one. Yay! Okay, we have one more. To gain a greater understanding of the four symbols that represent the four different powers and specializations of the druids, we're going to do a little exercise where you identify these symbols. Okay. Stand on the symbol that represents stars. This one. Yay, correct. Stand on the symbol that represents moon. Not that one. Not that one. I'm guessing it's this one. Oh, I do see a moon there. Okay. Lightning. Got that one over here. Lightning. 
You're beginning to get a grasp of which symbol is which. Thank you, sir. And now vanilla candy is almost level three. Brilliant. Hello, Pi. I have returned for my brew. So there we have it. I f oh, I thought it was a brew, but I guess it's a scarecrow. Now we just need to bubble up a wonderful, magical, vegan witch's brew. Oh, see, it is a brew. I knew it. First, we'll need a whole bunch of wood for the fire. We need to keep the cauldron bubbling and boiling because the brew can't be allowed to go cold. If that happens, we'll need to start over. There's plenty of wood outside the swamp. Check the ground between the swamp and the iron gate, and you'll be sure to find all the wood we need. Is that all we need? Or if I go get that wood and bring it back, you're going to ask me to get something else. All right, I'm just collecting wood now, but I am sure she's going to try and like make us get something else, too. Looks like you found plenty of wood. This will be enough for our brew with plenty left over to keep my swamp tea warm. Good work, Cadence. Now we just need to find all the ingredients we need. See, I knew there was going to be more. I found eco-friendly, locally produced alternatives to the original ingredients, so this will just be great. <sighs> Instead of goat mucus, a classic ingredient in witch's brews, we're going to use completely standard swamp water. Okay, so maybe the brew won't be quite the same perfect shade of puke green as it would have been if we'd used goat mucus. But it's just as powerful. I hope you agree that it's a worthwhile sacrifice, Cadence. Good to hear. Now you're no witch, but you maybe understand that many less progressive witches would become green while greener around the gills if they heard this kind of newfangled talk. Here's a bottle. Fill it up with swamp water from the jetty down below my house. Will do. What else you got? I've been thinking about this for a long while. It was pretty hard, but in the end, I arrived at the answer of just what could be used to replace bat wings. It's tough to find good replacements from the plant kingdom, mainly because of the flavors, but I think I found a solution. Swamp celery does the trick just as nicely. Swamp celery grows everywhere here in the swamps, so it won't be hard to find some. Come back when you've found enough. Newt legs, that's all I'm saying. Newt legs. <laughs> this ingredient was a pretty tough nut to crack, Cadence. Ten cups of swamp tea later, though, I had an epiphany. Black toadstools. How come nobody thought of that before? Well, actually, it's not so strange. Black toadstools have a tendency to, well, kill people. Eh. The upside of this is that we won't be drinking the brew, so it wouldn't be a problem. Just be careful when you're picking them, Cadence. Black toadstools are Jorvik's most poisonous mushroom. That won't be a problem, will it? Good, good. Just be careful. The closest place you'll find black toadstools is up by the fallen gate at the Old King's Road. It's the road to the right when you come out of the swamp. Good luck. See, I could have gotten those before when I was out getting that wood. <laughs> Old King's Road. Oh, they're kind of cute mushrooms. We need four. <gasps> Got some swamp celery. Oh no, oh no. Ugh. And then immediately careened off of the ramp. Well, look at that. A bottle filled with swamp water. Nice work. Ah, you have the whole load of swamp celery. Great. Not quite as refined a flavor as bat wings, but it should give our witch's brew a crisp and tangy aftertaste. Believe me, witch's brew and aftertaste aren't usually words that are found together in the same sentence. You found some black toadstools. Great stuff. Let me just take those off your hands. Carefully. You wouldn't want to touch these with your bare skin, Cadence. Then things can go really very seriously wrong. Uh, did I not tell you that earlier? Oops. Yeah, because I'm definitely not wearing gloves. Oh, no. Right then. That's all the ingredients. Just need to throw them all into this cauldron here. There we go. Now you'll see, Cadence, one of the advantages of vegan witchcraft that I've noticed is that it's a lot faster to make witches' brews. Ta-da! See? Already done. 
Now we just need to pop our scarecrow into the witch's brew. There we are. Now we wait. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Nice day out, eh? Did you see the latest episode of your vegan idol last night? No? And your car is still working? There. Done. Look, Hayden's the scarecrow. It's alive. Is it? There it is. Yes. Jasper's going to be so happy. Crowy McCaw. He has a name and it's Crowy McCaw. Haha, <laughs> what a brilliant scarecrow you've got now, Cadence. Brilliant. This vegan witchcraft is a force to be reckoned with. Here's the new scarecrow. I've named him Crowy McCaw. Suitable, I think. Crow's crow and crow's caw. Crowy McCaw. You just need to bring him to Jasper and he'll get to work as soon as he's there. Let Jasper know he needs to take good care of Crowy McCaw and tell him that he's welcome over here sometime for a big steaming cup of swamp tea. See you soon, Cadence. Thank you. <gasps> Is he going to follow us? No, he's just gone on his own. Okay. <gasps> no! Don't fall! Do we have to escort him or is he just... Yeah, we do. Okay. Hello there, Cadence. What do you want? That's amazing. Oh, wow. What a brilliant scarecrow. He moves and everything. Haha, <laughs> Cadence, that's a great scarecrow right there. He's called Crowy Macaw, you say? Crowy Macaw. Sounds like a good name for a scarecrow. Have you seen? He looks pretty excited to get out into the pumpkin field and start scaring crows. <laughs> I really like this. Go on, Crowy McCaw. <laughs> Yay! So now he has a new job. Scaring, scarecrow, scaring crows, scarecrows. Crowy, Crowy McCaw. Okay. Oh, I love that Cadence is just not, not so sure about him. Crowy McCaw and I should get along great. Many thanks, Cadence. I knew I could trust you. Here's a little gift to say thanks for all your help. It's not much, but I hope you'll appreciate it. I'm sure we'll see each other again soon. Now I've got to go watch Crowy McCaw at work. Go on, Crowy. Go on, fella. Scare those flying thieves away. <laughs> what did he give us? A shirt. His old shirt. <laughs> thanks, Jasper. All right, guys, so if you are looking for Gary Goldtooth, wow, it's so weird to see them all here at once. He is out here on the road outside for Grove. Oh, there's a crack over there. He has a little quest for you. Hey ho, can you believe it's been over three years since I first brought my fabulous fillies here to Fir Grove? Nothing warms my heart like sharing these miraculous horses with riders who can appreciate the wilder side of Yorvik. For this special visit, I've brought every coat of these classic steeds with manes in every color of the rainbow. They come in two sizes, large like a shire horse or compact like an Icelandic. Looks aside, they're equally amazing and every bit as fast as other horses in Jurvik. There's even more to these magical horses than meets the eye. Ride into town and their colors will fade. Return to nature and their true colors will come glistening back to life. It's one of Jurvik's marvels. The call of the wilds always beckons. Soon it'll be time to mosey on to new pastures. I hope we'll cross paths again, Cadence. There are many other wondrous horses out there waiting to bond with a rider like you. Thanks, Gary. You really know how to cheer me up. So, you can too, you too can come visit Gary out here until, the horses are here until October 16th. So you can come check them out. This is not their last time returning, but we can never say for sure when they'll be back again. If they do arrive for the last time, uh, we will for sure let people know so that you can get them. But I think a lot of people were very excited, especially for the Icelandics, because I don't think those have come back. So yeah, everyone can get the ones that they're missing, but they're so pretty. And I'm having fun on Vanilla Candy now that She's just as fast as a regular horse. All right, I'm going to go check out the Pandoric Crack. And you guys, give a thumbs up if you're a fan of the Yorvik Wild Horses. And don't forget to subscribe so you can watch more awesome Star Stable videos. And I will see you next time. Bye!